All right, so we have one more little thing I want to go over with you real quick. Part of what we see with these resurrection appearances isn't just that Jesus rose from the dead. It also gives us a foreshadowing of what our own resurrection will be like. I mentioned earlier the idea of the resurrection of the body. This um, is a belief shared by Jews, Muslims, and um, Christians, but in particular for Christianity, our understanding of the resurrection of the body is always seen in the light of Christ. So when Jesus appears to the disciples, we, we see that um, Jesus is resurrected. That's different than being resuscitated. Resuscitation means you just return to your old earthly form, but Jesus isn't returning to an old earthly form. He is um, not just resuscitated, he's resurrected. He is um, living in a changed state. So this, um, this gives us some ideas of what maybe the second coming will be like for us. So one of the things you saw was that the earthly body of Jesus was so changed that um, neither the disciples or Mary Magdalene or the people on the road to Emmaus recognized him. So Jesus seems to have, he has bodily form, he looks like a person, but he's somehow changed. So that shows us that the, the resurrected body isn't going to, be, going to be the same as our old physical body. But Jesus does walk around, he sits down to eat, he breaks bread, so there ha must have some physical nature. Um, however, in the story with Thomas, you notice it said the doors were locked, but he came right through them. So he seems to be able to also not be bound by physical um, boundaries we have now. Um, he can walk through walls, um, he can eat, so there's some, something physical about it, but yet not completely physical. So he's not a ghost, but he's not exactly the same as we are because he can walk through walls. So at the end of the day, we cannot know the exact nature of the risen Lord's body, but what we can say is it's become imperishable and immortal. So imperishable and immortal. So imperishable means that it won't decay, and immortal means that um, he won't die again. Because remember the story of Lazarus in John's Gospel? He raises Lazarus from death, right? That's a, um, that's a, like more like a resuscitation, because Lazarus is going to die again, but Jesus won't. He's resurrected. And um, it was, as he said, he was no longer um, limited by rules and confines of this world, because he can walk through walls. And remember, at the same time he was appearing to the disciples in Emmaus, he also appeared to Simon Peter. So there's there's something different about this, this type of form. So um, this is a sign... Um, it's a sign of the, of the promise of the kingdom of God. So the, his resurrection is also sort of a sign that the kingdom of God is starting now. And when he ascends into heaven, he takes his place on the throne with the Father and leaves us to finish it up till he returns. So it's almost like the starting point of the kingdom. Um, and, you know, we're left to finish it. And, and again, as I said, this transformation of his body also gives us a clue of what the, the, the resurrection of the body will be like. Um, we can't know for sure. In his writing, St. Paul says we won't know when this is going to happen. He, the, he used a great description. He said it will be like a thief in the night. We won't know when it's going to happen or when it's going to come. But we, we realize that our bodily resurrection will be something like, something like what happens to Jesus. Um, so that, that's that. Next class, remember to bring your resurrection newspaper clipping.